So I will, in, I will hand over the presenter right to the presenter, who is nobody else but Amina Rahim, who, who will be doing justice to her research on the effect of nursing and educational program on exclusive breastfeeding of adolescent mothers attending at Nita Clinic at primary health centers in Zaria Metropolis, Nigeria. By way of introduction, Amina Abdul Rahim is a nurse, is a nurse, is a midwife, and a lecturer from the Department of Nursing Science, University of Midugudi, which is not is in Nigeria. She has studied in prestigious universities in Nigeria. She has got a first degree in Amadubello University, Zaria, which is also a high-profile university. She had a master's and a master's in maternal and child health nursing in the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, which is also in Nigeria. She's also currently at the verge of completing her PhD in the maternal, in maternal and newborn nursing in Amadubello University, Zaria, with research focus on adolescent and infant care in Amadubello University, Zaria. She has published articles in national journals and she has also presented papers in international and national conferences. We are welcome to the Virtual International Day of the Midwife. I'm going to hand over the presenter right to you, Amina. You are welcome. So it's all yours now, Amina. Go ahead and make your presentation. Thank you. I think I'm in a wolf. Hi, Katrina, are you there? I'm back now. Are, okay. are you getting volume? I'm not hearing any sound. Yes, I'm hearing everything. I mean, it seems to have problems with our connections, but it will be going off and on. We are literally in the same place walking. But I, I want to say, if she has issues with her connections, I mean, she may have to switch on to my laptop so that it will make it will make a good flow. I thought I should let you know. 
Is that okay? Okay, I'm hearing you now, but I wasn't, and then I had to, I got kicked out of the audio conference, <clears throat> had to go back in through the other browser. So um, okay. apologies to our delegates for technical issues, um, but if Amina can continue, and if you're in the same place, if we can't hear her, maybe you could um, read her slides. Okay, okay. For her. Okay. Thank you very much, Catherine. No problem. Thank you very much. As I was saying, adolescent mothers face a lot of challenges in the course of their motherhood as they combine both maternal role and developmental tasks simultaneously.
study, go study and control groups. And then that shows that it's no statistical significant difference in also the demographic characteristics of the study and control groups. And it's also confirmed the homogeneity of the groups. Catherine Kashi. Hi, Catherine. I can hear you now. Okay. Keep going as long as we have sound, right? Yeah, I can hear you, but it looks like her, her, the poor connection. I was wondering if she can use my own machine and just go on with this presentation, if it's fine. Is that okay? I don't know. Uh, uh, that's fine. However, uh, but did you say Amina was next to you? Is she going to talk or are you going to talk? Yeah, she feels comfortable to talk, she said. Okay, do you need to um, log in again? How do we switch to your machine? Yeah, uh, I'm there. I can just give it to her. I can give her the, I can take the presenter status and then she will continue as me in the presentation, if that's fine. Okay, so you'll take presenter. You, ha you have her slides up and then she yeah. will talk? Yeah, if that's fine, yeah. All right, from this point on, right? Because it's 8.25 already. I mean, yeah. 25 past the hour in my time zone. Okay. All right, All right. let's do it then. Okay. Thank you very much. So, and from the results, May I start from the result? Just continue from where you stop. Don't go back. Just go from where you are. Okay. So I'm at table 1.1, which presents the social demographic characteristics of both study and control groups. And uh, it shows those statistical significant difference in all social demographic characteristics of the study and control groups. And that confirmed the homogeneity of the groups. Then table 1.2 presents the knowledge of exclusive breastfeeding of both study and control group for the intervention. And then the aggregate mean score of study and control groups were uh, 72.27 and 71.27 respectively. T-test value of 0 0.2653 and p-value of 0 0.7929 was obtained. The study that, ref that shows the study reviewed low level of knowledge and no statistical significant difference in the mean knowledge score at pretest between the study groups. And this is in line with this finding is in accordance with the study of Ali Absalem et al. 2019 and that of Saidi et al. 2021, who discovered low pretest level of breastfeeding knowledge for post study and control groups. Table 1.3 presents the exclusive knowledge of exclusive breastfeeding for both study and control group after the intervention. And then the aggregate mean score of study and control group are 136 and 118, respectively. The T test value of 0 0.8172 and P value of 0 0.00 was obtained. And the knowledge, which shows that the, no the knowledge increase. The knowledge increase was observed in the study group at the post-test, which was very marked and great throughout the stages, while that of control group was gradual and very small. The intervention group that shows the intervention has impact in improving their knowledge of exclusive breastfeeding. And these findings is in line with that of regarding SL 2021 and that of SAID SL 2021 that shows statistical improvements in the mean knowledge score of exclusive breastfeeding in the study group after the education intervention. Then the table 1.4 presents the exclusive breastfeeding practice of post study and control group after the intervention. And the aggregate mean score of study and control group was 252 and 118 respectively. T test value of 3.3407 and P value of 0.0045 was obtained. That shows the nursing education program was effective in improving the apparatus of exclusive breastfeeding. And this finding is similar to the finding of Nasir et al. 2017 and that of regarding et al. 2021, 
will discover significant improvement in the main practice score of breastfeeding techniques among the study group compared to that of a control group. Then the satisfaction, the tip 1.5 presents the satisfaction of study groups after the intervention. And the aggregate missed call of study and control group are 4.91 and 2.2, 2.92 respectively. T test value of 4.5388 and P value of 0.453 was obtained. So that, that means that post test, the mothers in the study group were more satisfied with their breastfeeding role than those in the control group. This implies the, the educational program was, in, was influenced in enhancing the maternal satisfaction of the breastfeeding role. Then figure 1.1 present the line chart showing the effect of the interve of intervention on knowledge over six months postpartum. So this chart is showing, is presenting both the study and the control group, the time series, the time series, the level of knowledge at time series. So at pre-intervention, so, so this is discovered, you can see that both the study and control has the same, almost the same level of knowledge, which after the intervention, the knowledge in the intervention group was greatly improved and this was maintained all through to the end of the observation, which is six months postpartum. And there was a slight, at 14 weeks and six months, there was a slight decline in the level of knowledge. So looking at this, and if you can, and likewise for the control group, we discovered that they left the knowledge slightly increased, and then the increase was also maintained at that gradual pace to the end of the observation. And there was also a slight decline at 14 weeks to six month postpartum. So, from by implication, it means that the non the intervention has the the is has the effect it has the ability to maintain to sustain their knowledge over a period of time and likewise uh, it was also observed that that decline shows that human being has a way of having slight decrease in their level of knowledge which now give a room for continuous education of mothers and then the, 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 the strength, part of the strength of this design is that it has the ability to differentiate the impact, the effect of the intervention from the circular trend. The circular trend in the sense that there are some changes or increase in knowledge that may occur even the, without the intervention, which was slightly observed at the control group. So the, inf, the inf design has the impact, it has the ability to differentiate the effect of the intervention from the circular trend. So the next slide is figure 1.2, which also presents the line chart, so the effect of intervention on practice over six months pattern. So at this stage, we, okay, so at this we discovered that, and part of the, it's also showed that after the intervention, there was a great an increase in the, for the, for the intervention group or through the intervention, which also maintained that that's decline at 14th and 6th month was pattern. And likewise, at the post-intervention for the control, there was just gradual uh, increase in the level of practice, which also declined at 14th and the sixth month. So that means there was there should be continuous education of the, of mothers because this now translates that even their subsequent delivery, those in the control and the intervention group still have the tendency to have a good knowledge of what the exclusive breastfeeding is all about, the practice, good practice of exclusive breastfeeding, but they still need to continue it so as to update and keep up to date and have optimal knowledge and the practice. So, and then, okay. So the next conclusion, the results shows that Nursing education program could significantly improve uh, the knowledge, practice, and satisfaction of adolescent mothers on their exclusive breastfeeding. So, the, therefore, the need for the midwives to continue educating adult, adolescent mothers. So, recommendation: there's need for continuous training and education of adolescent mothers on exclusive breastfeeding. And there's also commended that similar study should be repeated in other parts of the country. So part of the limitation of this study is that we could not establish, based on the chart number two, if 1.2, we 
we could not establish the baseline practice of adolescent mother. And the reason being that most of them were primary graphida and do not have any experience of what practice of exclusive breastfeeding was all about. So these are some of the references. And thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, Amina. So I've taken over the presentation from her as a facilitator. Apologies for the breaking connectivities issue and other stuff. We really apologize from down here. We well, thank you for your complete attention. So please feel free to ask questions in the chat boxes. I'm just watching it to see if there's any question coming up. Do we have any questions from the audience, please? I mean, uh, I want to ask you some questions for the audience. I want to ask you some questions. I was just wondering why, well, why was the focus on adolescents? It's just my own thought. I was like, okay, why is she focusing on adolescents? What, what about other mothers, full-blown adult mothers? Why adolescents? Do you want to tell the audience about it or do you want to tell me more about it? I'm going to give you the headset. Thank you very much. Focusing this uh, study on adolescents is very paramount. As you can see, globally, about 18 million adolescent girls give birth each year, and 95% of them are from Sub-Saharan Africa. And we know that motherhood in adolescents is often cumbersome and difficult, as they combine multiple life changes simultaneously. They shift to adulthood, you know, that's a period of confusion. So at this stage, there's their possibility of marriage, the pregnancy, and childbirth. All this complicates their motherhood. So, and again, adolescents are also known from the previous literatures to have some poor outcome in the time of their infant. They are associated with low infant birth weight, uh, premature delivery, and even low eye morbidity and mortality. So all this risk coupled with their low level of knowledge and lack of experience and the care of infants, particularly the appropriate infant feeding, can complicate or can be make them or their infants to be in a situation that make their survivor to be threatening. So as such, compared to the older women, some of them have gained experience from previous delivery. Some of them must have exposed to this kind of training during their, prime, uh, their first child or that, at that stage of development. So they must have gained uh, some of this knowledge on the infant feeding. So that's why it's more paramount to focus this on adolescents because focusing them and training them and if they are able to give appropriate feeding to their infant, we'll be able to achieve high infant health and, and toward, towards the achievement of their sustainable development goals. And again, the, child, the kids or the infants of uh, older mothers, they are also, at the, they, are, they, they don't face that the risk of uh, having low birth weight or high mortality and morbidity. So I think focusing on adolescents is paramount and is very good to achieve more of uh, uh, infant health while looking at training them or supporting adolescent mothers. Yeah, we are, I think we still have some few minutes to the end of the session. I was also wondering that why did you decide to choose a quasi experimental study? Why do you have any reason for that, considering that this is part of your doctoral thesis? Yeah. Is there any reason you want to tell us about it? Yeah, yeah. okay. 
Thank you very much. And the fact that the aim of the study was to train, then means we want to see the impact of the training on the adolescents that were trained. So that means is the most appropriate is to look at the quasi experimental for the fact that we train some good of people of adolescents and the other ones were allowed to face their routine care. So may that the most appropriate is to look at the quasi experimental and the quasi experimental, the control interrupted time series is looked into because we want to see their sustainability of their, of their knowledge and the practice, even after the first child or towards long tail of the immunization like six months, are they able to have their knowledge? Uh, the practice is still very, very okay. So which now translate that even after their subsequent delivery, how is their knowledge? We can predict the knowledge, whether they still have or they still just need to refresh their knowledge and pro, uh, their knowledge so that they can maintain the tempo of practice. So that's why it's paramount because the, the research is aimed at evaluating the effect of a program. So thank you very much. Do we have more questions here? If I turn off the recording, please. Any more questions? This is a facility question in the chat, Halima. Yeah, there's, there's, I can't find any question here. I keep scrolling. Well, that's my question uh, for Amina is, if, if in the study you asked any qualitative questions, you know, what did they think about the intervention? What did they feel more about their satisfaction? Um, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, you mean, for I mean, not to the audience, to the, to the participant, did she ask them any qualitative questions? No, for Amina and her study. Yeah. Did did she ask her study participants any open-ended questions, or was it strictly the the qualitative data? You know, knowledge increased, satisfaction increased, etc. Did did you get any? Um, you know, open-ended questions in there. Is it quantitative study? Yeah, I just asked her. She said she wasn't, she couldn't hear you properly. And she said she didn't ask any question regarding qualitative question. It's just pure quantitative, she just said. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, more, um, more follow up, you know, um, in the further study, further research is to find out how the adolescents felt about the experience. Right? Yeah. So, so what do you want to say about it? So uh, she was asking if maybe I should say it in another way that did you ask them any qualitative question and you said you didn't ask? No. So perhaps do you intend to do anything like that in your further studies or are you recommending anything like that for your further studies? Okay. Yes. Maybe subsequently that qualitative aspect of it can be looked into in a subsequent study. For now, but just in like I said, to know the level of satisfaction as regards as regards what this study is all about, their satisfaction with regards to the exclusive breastfeeding is all about. So this can be recommended in subsequent study. Thank you.